Is it a good idea to get the chickens all at once or one at a time? How does that work? It's definitely best to get however many chickens that you want. So if you were going to get chicks, you'd probably end up getting four or five. Um, they're very easy to, to, to raise. Um, but you could always lose one and then it's um, very difficult to get um, integrate chickens with your existing chickens because they have a pecking order and it's always difficult um, you've got to be really careful sometimes they don't get on with each other and things like that and it's if they don't if chickens don't get on with other chickens then it's very difficult to integrate them um, one of the you know the chickens could be scared all the time and they won't come around to to be in um, sort of in the little um, flock as it was. Uh, so, um, you know, it's always best to sort of uh, plan on how many chickens you're going to get from the start, really. If you get them, the chicks from a reputable breeder, they're pretty usually vaccinated for uh, Americ's disease um, the first couple of days. And um, then you get a, um, they have a, a starter food. Um, for about six weeks and that's uh, medicated as well and that just um, protects them from any other diseases and that's pretty much all you have to do. So that's the, all you have to do, you don't have to worry about, I was, you know, You don't have to worry about an, an annual like that, injection or anything like that. No. <laughs> okay, so it's pretty easy it sounds like actually. Yeah, keeping chickens are, is keep, very easy, yes. Let's see. Do you need a rooster for chickens to lay eggs? You don't need a rooster, don't chickens a rooster. Will, will lay eggs without a rooster. <laughs> but if you do have a rooster, um, you get fertile eggs, which some people think um, are better, but I'm, I'm not so sure. I think, you know, just ordinary eggs, unfertilized eggs are just as good as uh, fertile, fertile eggs. We talked a little bit about dogs and cats as possible predators, uh, but it sounds like but there's other predators that could get chickens. Yeah, there's lots of predators. Chickens are very good to eat, and there's lots of things that like to eat chickens. <laughs> um, not just us. Um, the, the main, there's, I guess raccoons are their main sort of predator. Um, so you have to make sure that um, they're pretty secure at night because raccoons are nocturnal and they will definitely come by and make sure everything is secure. Um, I haven't had any trouble with raccoons and they don't tend to try and dig underneath to, to get in um, but they will if there is an opportunity uh, you know take a chicken if they, if they get the chance. Um, the other uh, predators are hawks and that's always another uh, a problem. Um, and if your chickens are, are free ranging in, in a garden or something like that, then there is a possibility that a hawk could get one of your chickens. Um, but if you make sure, I mean, it depends on where the coop is, if there's trees overhead and stuff, and um, if you're around. Um, to, to avoid hawks, it's probably be better to, to be there when your chickens are out of the, of the pen. Um, if, if you've got a lot of hawks in the area. When you go on vacation, what do you do with your chickens? Well, chickens are pretty easy to keep. All they need is some fresh water and some food every day. So um, you can always train a neighbor or someone like that okay. to just to come in and, and, um, and just look after your chickens. They need to be let out in the morning and they need to be um, locked up at night and then they just need some food and, and um, some water. And that's pretty much it. There's, there's no, there's no place you can take them to get, there's no sort of... Um, they don't need a walk and they don't need no, that's true. <laughs> to be played with, they're just happy to go out. Yeah, after. just a couple of minutes every day and, and stuff. Um, but I don't think there's any way you can actually take them to, to have them looked after while you're away. Oh, okay. You really need to get someone in to, right. to look after them. But it sounds pretty low maintenance. They are pretty low maintenance. They don't need, the, they don't need much looking after. Um, they only need cleaning out. They don't use. They only use the um, the coop to lay their eggs and sleep. So um, at the bottom of the coop, there's some sawdust. How much does food cost? Is it really expensive? What do they eat? <laughs> they like sweet corn. They like worms. Uh, they like um, dry food, and they like their um, starter food and corn and some 
kitchen food um, mixed together. Like kitchen scraps? Yeah. Maybe just, something you'd put in your compost? Yeah, almost anything. Almost anything. Pretty much. They have a, um, a, a basic uh, chicken food that you get from a uh, food store and it contains um, crushed oyster shells and that helps them make their, the shells for the eggs and they need that. Um, but apart from that, they pretty much eat any food scraps. They like some uh, lettuce. They eat the grass um, if they're let out. Uh, and um, they eat, uh, any bugs in your garden, they'll scratch around. And if you move a rock, they'll all come over and uh, eat the little bugs under the rock. And if you're digging the garden, they'll all hang around. And when you turn the um, soil over, they'll, they'll pick at the, the bugs in the soil. Can you tell us a little bit about the video that we're going to see? Two of my customers, uh, one in Pacifica and one in uh, Cupertino, and they're just talking about the, um, the experience of keeping chickens and the chicken, uh, the chicken coops, and um, how they came to, um, how they decided they were going to keep chickens and why and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, it was my wife's idea to get these chickens. I tried to dissuade her from, from it because I just saw it as more maintenance, more work. Uh, but once they were here, it's really uh, interesting to have chickens. So watch them grow up, the animals, and have my grandson kind of interact with them. He's just two and a half years old and feeds them and can appreciate that uh, they're uh, not only a, a, a food source of eggs and, and fertilizer for our garden, our extensive garden, but they're uh, also fun to be around. And uh, if you have children around, I think uh, they learn to appreciate uh, a, a food source that, uh, that you have to kind of maintain. My name is Richard, and uh, I'm the co-owner of these chickens. My wife, Suzanne, was the instigator to get, the, get this project done back here. Uh, yeah, th we, you know, we're fortunate to have a, a pretty large backyard, so this chicken coop, uh, uh, we don't have to worry about uh, noise from an illegal rooster. Because <laughs> now that the chickens are old enough, we can see they're all hens. Oh, we have three types in the Rhode Island Red, and the uh, Buff Orpington, and the uh, Barred Rock, which is a small little black striped one, which is the smartest one of the bunch. Always been the smallest little runt. Seems to like know how to get the food quicker than the rest of them. They, they eat a lot of insects. Um, any insect unfortunate enough to get in the cage is dead meat, whether it's a flying one or a crawling one, you know. They're constantly like hunting, pecking, <laughs> looking for food. And uh, they're quiet, they're not noisy. They're beginning to cluck. I've actually heard them cluck a couple times now. They're not as caged up as they look all the time. We have a little uh, corral area underneath those redwoods in the back of our yard here that have to kind of unfortunately be enclosed because we have to protect them from their natural predator here, which is uh, number one at night is the raccoons, and then number two are the hawks. We have lots of hawks around here. Maintenance of uh, the morning is, is <laughs> it falls on me. I mean, the uh, pretty much let them out of their coop in the, in the morning and I clean their uh, hen house out at least once or twice a week.